In this video, we're going to look at some problems that deal with the Arrhenius equation and we'll figure out how to work through them. So in the first problem here, we are asked to figure out how many molecules out of a thousand um, actually have enough energy to undergo a chemical reaction if we have an activation energy of 3.86 kilojoules. So our activation energy here is 3.86 kilojoules and we're told that the temperature this reaction is happening at is 300 degrees Celsius. Okay, so our goal is to figure out how many molecules out of a thousand can react. So as a reminder here, we know that K equals A to the E to the minus EA over RT. And this part of the equation represented the fraction of molecules that have enough energy to overcome. And we'll call this the fraction factor or FF. So if we can calculate the fraction factor, then we can figure out how many molecules can react. Okay, the important, one of the important things to note here is that R is the gas constant. It's 8.314 and the units are joules per mole Kelvin. So we want to make sure that our activation energy gets converted to joules and our temperature gets converted to Kelvins. So here our activation energy is 3,860 joules and our temperature in Kelvin is going to be 573.15 K. And now we're going to calculate our fraction factor. This equals E to the negative activation energy, so minus 3860, divided by R, which is 8.314, times the temperature, which we know is 573.15. And our fraction factor ends up being 0.445 which means that 44.5% of our molecules have enough energy to react. And if we have 1,000 molecules, then 44.5% of that is 445 molecules. So under these conditions, for a reaction with an activation energy of 3.86 kilojoules, 445 out of 1,000 molecules have enough energy to react. This second problem asks us to calculate the activation energy. So we're looking for EA. Um, if a reaction happens at 345 Kelvin, it has a rate constant of 11 per molar per second and it has a pre-exponential factor of 20 per molar per second. So this problem we can directly apply to the Arrhenius equation. So K equals A times E to the minus EA over RT. So in this case we're told everything except the activation energy. So we know our rate constant is 11 per molar per second. This equals the Arrhenius constant which is 20 per molar per second times E to the minus EA, which we don't know. R is 8.314, this is in joules per mole Kelvin. And our temperature is 345 Kelvin. So if we do a little bit of algebra here, we have 0 0.55, all right, so it's 11 divided by 20, and the units canceled, equals E to the minus EA over 2868.33. And this unit is now in joules per mole because the Kelvin canceled. I can take the natural log of each side. So the natural log of 0.55 is negative 0 0.598 equals negative EA over my 2868.33 joules per mole. And finally, I can solve for EA. So my activation energy equals 1,000. 714.8 joules per mole. So let's go ahead and try one more problem then. In this problem, we are told two temperatures, so we have T1 and T2. So 100 degrees Celsius, let's go ahead and convert to Kelvin right away, is 373.15 Kelvin. T2 is 200 degrees Celsius, so that's 473.15 Kelvin. We're told two rate constants, 
So the rate constant 100 degrees Celsius is 15.86, and this is per second. The rate constant at 200 degrees Celsius is 198.7 per second. And our goal here is to calculate both the activation energy and also our pre-exponential factor. Okay, so the key to this problem is using the second form of the Arrhenius equation we talked about in the previous video. So that form was the natural log of K2 over K1 equals negative Ea over R times 1 over T2 minus 1 over T1. Okay, so now it's just a matter of plugging some values in. So we have the natural log of 198.7 divided by 15.86. These are both in per second, so the units cancel. This equals negative Ea over R, which is 8.314, this is joules per mole Kelvin, times 1 over T2, which is 473.15 Kelvin, minus 1 over T1, which is 373.15 Kelvin, Okay, so now I see that my only variable here is the activation energy. So doing a little bit of algebra, right? So if I take the natural log of 198.7 divided by 15.86, that's 2.528. This equals my activation energy times 6.8125 times 10 to the minus fifth and this unit ends up being moles per joule. And now finally I can solve for my activation energy. So Ea here ends up being 37,108.2 joules per mole. Okay, so that gives us our activation energy. 37,108.2 joules per mole. So the second thing I want to determine then is my pre-exponential factor. Okay, and this, whereas it might seem tricky, it's really not, because we know that K equals A times E to the minus EA over RT. So let's pick one of our rate constants and one of our temperatures. We just figured out the activation energy, and we know R, so we can solve for A. So in this case, I'm just going to take my first temperature, so 15.86 equals A, times e to the negative 37,108.2 divided by 8.314 times my temperature here for T1 is 373.15. So doing a little bit of algebra, we have 15.86 equals 6.39 times 10 to the negative sixth times A. So A equals 2 million 428,003 per second, right? And one thing to note here is that the pre-exponential factor will always have the unit of the rate constant. If you had chosen to use T2 and K2, you should find exactly the same value for the pre-exponential factor because it's independent of temperature.